Amen, amen. amen. Good evening, good evening, everybody. We are here to celebrate the Lord uh, tonight yeah. in way of Bible study. Amen. amen. Uh, amen. Before we get started, uh, I just want to say welcome. Welcome, Trinity. Uh, welcome, friends. And whoever is uh, online, God bless you. I want you to be a part of this Bible study as we go forth, first of all, in our praise and worship tonight. We're going to be singing, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Amen. If you can Amen. join us. Amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to plunge me Neath a healing, cleansing flood Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him How I prove him over and over Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Let's hit that third verse. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus, simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Let's give God our very best hand praise in this place. Amen. Amen. The Lord says, where, where three or more or two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. Amen. And we know that we have a whole congregation behind us, amen, and the body of Christ with us, amen, on Ustream, uh, but here we may have a few, but God's presence is in the midst, amen. You know something, I'm, I'm thinking about something, you know, I know we're live, praise God, but I am on the battlefield for my Lord, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Amen. Amen. As they come, as they come. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
man. I know we're not the regular praise and worship team, but I believe anybody that's been born again and has a voice Amen. can praise and worship God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know something, brothers and sisters, we're in the we're in the midst of something going on in our nation, but it's just like God to just turn the tables on things. Amen. And our faith goes against whatever's coming against us. Amen. Don't you believe that? Yes, sir. I truly believe that adversity does not stop our faith. That's why I want to sing. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind, victory today is mine. Somebody needs joy. Joy is mine, joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Joy today is mine. Happiness. Happiness is mine. Happiness is mine. Happiness today is mine. I told Satan. Get thee behind, happiness today is mine. Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. What a Amen. way to end the day, my brothers, in praise and worship and a good Bible study before the Lord, going through his treasures that he has laid out for us in Amen. his word. Amen. 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 We got a couple of things we want to do this evening, family. Uh, first of all, we want to. Uh, read our healed and deliverance list. Uh, that is right uh, over there. If you can hand that to me, thank you so much. Amen. We're going to read our healed and deliverance list because we have some soldiers in need of healing, yeah. some soldiers in need of a blessing in their body from God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read the list, and um, uh, Deacon Short is going to come with prayer after I read this list. Uh, we're praying for Caden Watson. We're praying for Sister Crystal Seller and Brother Christopher Seller. Amen. Amen. Minister Amen. Christopher Seller, hallelujah. Lord, Father, be with them. Bless them. We're praying for Beverly Jackson. Hallelujah. Amen. Be with her. We're pray praying for Ken Roach. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Bless them. We're praying also for Stephanie Turnage and Ryan Turnage and the family. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're praying for Denise Cannamore, uh, Teron Hurst, Ralph Foster, Mother Foster, too. Uh, Boney Willis, Robert Tillman. Heard from that brother this week. He is full of energy for the Lord. He's healing greatly. Tamika Rucker. I understand that she's coming to contact with a blessing herself. Amen. Amen. We'll continue to pray for her. We're praying for Wendy Clark, Brother Clark's wife. Hallelujah Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brenda Loggins, Minister Brenda Loggins, and she's still on fire yes. for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. We're praying for Carol uh, Levine. We're praying for Curtis Washington Sr. He's in the Missouri Veterans Home. Our prayers go out to the Missouri Veterans Home at this time, too. We're praying for Mother Benny Boyd. We're praying for all our members who are in nursing homes because at this time there is no visitation. Amen. But we're praying because God is yet behind the walls. We are praying for Josephine Green. We're praying for uh, Betsy Gray, Alicia Davis. Hallelujah, my sister in Arizona and her husband, Teron Davis. We're praying for uh, Doris Reese. We're praying for Dayon Ballard. We're praying for Willie Delk. We're praying for Reverend Earl Kennard. We're praying for Mother Maddie Bray. God bless you, Mother yeah. Maddie Bray. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, the mother of our church. Amen. Yeah. We're praying for Odessa yeah. Davis and Rosetta Washington. We're praying for Mary Baldwin. We're praying for Phyllis and Seymour Young. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I heard that they're calling people and praying for them, even in their time of affliction. Amen. We're praying for Mother Verlene Reed. Hallelujah. We're praying for Sherry Pisca. We're praying for Claudel Wynn, Michelle Desha. We're praying for Ronald Taylor. We're praying for Bernice Bryant, Harry Tut, Melvin Glenn. Hallelujah. God bless you, Brother Glenn and Sister Glenn. We're praying for uh, Mother Savisa Croft. We're praying for Lana Johnson, Walter Williams. We're praying for Samaya Burdett. We're praying for Barbara Jackson. Mary Bass, Betty Rose, and Dorothy Hassel. We're also praying for Mother Jessie Edwards right now because she's in bereavement uh, for her great-granddaughter, uh, Nakea Durham, and the services are April 19th. The visitation is from 10 to 12, and the service is at 12 at Granbury Funeral Home, but please check with the funeral home because there are real restrictions on the number of people. Amen? 
which we found out this past week. We want you to pray for Minister Wanika and uh, Martin and her family. Um, her auntie, uh, Annie Sawyer, one of our longtime members, has gone home also. And that service will be Friday, April 24th at TMC. You'll have more information coming your way regarding that. Now, what we also want to pray for uh, Sister Sherry Davis and uh, the daughters and son of Minister Bryant K. Davis. We've laid him to rest on this past week, amen, this past week. And uh, please keep them in your prayers. They need your prayers. I'm also asking for prayer for, my, um, for, my, for our children who are also in the state of Washington, if you know that's a hot spot too, but God is keeping our children in Washington, amen? So please pray for our children in Washington, amen. Um, hallelujah. If you have anybody that you need to pray for, anybody need to say a name or give a name out that we can pray for, amen? Okay, praise the Lord, amen, amen, amen. And if you have anybody that you need us to pray for, e even where you are, say their name out loud yeah. because Lord, yeah. the Lord hears us. Yes, Amen. He yes. Amen. Yeah. All right, Deacon, if you could take yes, us sir. to the throne, please. Yes, sir. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to come before you, heavenly Father. As a pastor read the list, Lord God, I, I, I know some, per some people on that list personally, Lord God. And I've seen the healing that you've already done, Lord God. And I thank you so much for it, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, before I go any further, please forgive me, Lord God, of anything I've said or done that was not pleasing in your sight, Lord God, because I come before you, Lord God, on behalf of others, Lord God. And I, and I, and I, I thank you so much for cleansing me right now, Lord God, so I can come before you, Lord God. So I come before you right now, Lord God. You heard the names. You know each and one of them by the hairs on their head, Lord God. And I thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you so much for Sister Jackson, Lord God. I hear she, she's rehabbing, Lord God, and almost on her way home, Lord God. I just thank you so much. You are truly a healer, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you for Brother Kent Caton, Lord God. I touch him as well, Lord God. Lord God, I just thank you so much for those that you've sent home, Lord God. I've seen your hand, Lord God. I thank you so much. Lord God, be with those that are bereaving on our list, Lord God. Sister Sherry, Lord God, comfort her, Lord God, as only you can. Walk with her, Lord God, every step of the way, Lord God. Surround her with this, this body of Christ, Lord God. Thank you so much, Lord God, for this body of believers here. Touch them, Lord God, even at home, Lord God. There are some at home that don't feel well. There are some that are not on the list, Lord God. But they're on your list, Lord God. And I thank you so much for touching them where they are right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So, Lord God, we thank you. We love you. We thank you for your healing and your keeping power, Lord God. Keep us now, Lord God, as we go out into the, to the, to the vineyard, Lord God. We're out there now, Lord God. Allow us to share the, to share the gospel even by this miraculous technology that yes, you've given us, yes, Heavenly Father. Yes. Let us learn it and yes. use it, Lord God. Let us not get complacent, Lord God. Share the gospel even there. So we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory right now. I thank you so much that you touched the message today, Lord God. Thank you so much for you stream working well right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you so much for it being received, Lord God, by those who you have marked for it to be received. So we love you, we honor, and we do adore you. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen. Yeah, and the righteous run into him and they are saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, deacons. Amen. I tell you, it's a good thing to be able to go back to the book, ain't it? Amen. Hallelujah. When all else fails, let's go back to the book. Amen. I want to give a, uh, just a couple of announcements um, before we get started right now. I know that this uh, coming Sunday, is going to be our first Sunday, which we share communion. And I want to let those who are you streaming and those who are here, the few that are here right now, I want to let you know that I need for you to get some crackers and some kind of grape juice. I like Welch's grape juice. And we're going to take communion uh, from home as we take it all together this first Sunday. You get your cracker and you get your Welch's grape juice, and we're going to honor the Lord with communion. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to 
take care of communion that way, that way. Again, I want to continue to remind you, and some are really doing this. They're calling in the office, and they're telling, letting us know who they've checked on so that we won't let people, like, slip through the cracks. Thank you so much for being faithful and doing that. Please continue to do that. Hallelujah. I'm talking to our congregation right now. I'm talking to everybody, but I'm really talking to our congregation. Amen. Amen. If you are in need, call the office. Amen. We ain't hiding from nobody. Amen. Amen. We are blessed, church, and God has blessed us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not suffer in silence or suffer by yourself. We are here for one another, and we need for you to know that. Amen. Amen. God is so awesome. God is so awesome. We are in our Bible study tonight. Woo! And we are in the book of Isaiah. And I want to thank uh, Minister Carlos Spropes for coming before me on last Wednesday and getting us through chapter one. Whoa, we've been in chapter one for so long now. Amen. But I thank God for that. We're going to go into chapter two. Uh, brother, thank you so much for holding that down. Hallelujah. And we're going to be in chapter two. I want to remind you that the title or the topic of our Bible study, even though it's the book of Isaiah, the topic and the title is a fallen people and a faithful God. A fallen people and a faithful God. And I just want to kind of touch on a couple other things before I get started into, uh, into chapter 2. Because I know somebody might be saying, hey man, we're in the middle of coronavirus. Why are you talking about Isaiah? Why is it so important that we be studying the book of Isaiah? Don't you, don't you know anything else? Amen. Amen. And, and I get you and I understand that. But can I tell you why we're studying the book of Isaiah? Can I, can I just tell you that? Can I share it with you for a moment? Well, basically, basically, the whole Bible is the word of God. And we can ill afford to take out anything in the Old Testament and throw it away. The New Testament is built on top of the Old Testament. And without the Old Testament, there would be no New Testament. Am I right about it? Amen. So we're, we're studying the Old Testament because it's going to show us the character of God. But let me go to the word. Let me give you some, some word reason while we're studying the book of Isaiah. I want to go to Romans chapter 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15 and 4. Why are we studying the Old Testament? Why are we in Isaiah? And why are we listening to what Jesus and, and what, the, what the Lord said about those who were his chosen people, Israel? Why are we going back there? Amen. If you can read that for me, minister, there's a... There's a um, but I'll tell you what, until you can get that, I'll, re I'll go ahead and read this one. It says in Romans 15 and 4, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope. That's what Paul said. Whatever things were written before were written for us, that we through patience and comfort of scripture might have hope. And right now, we need some patience. Am I right about it? Yeah, yeah. We're running all over the place. People are panicking. And they won't admit it, but they're panicking. Actions show it. Amen? And they said, we need some comfort right now. And the only way that we're going to get some comfort and some patience is in the Word of God. God shows us a part of his character in the Old Testament that we must know and we must be comfortable with. Amen? Amen. Next, I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 11. And the question is, why are we studying the book of Isaiah? Why is it relevant right now? Why are we doing this? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 10 and 11, if you can read that for me, sir. 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition mm. upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Amen. Let's stop right there. Let's look at that. All these things, what things? The things that were written in the Old Testament to them. Who are them? The Jews, Israel. They were written so that we would have an example, example on how to live. And they were written for our admonition 
upon whom the ends of the earth have come. And yes, the ends of the earth have come. These are the end times. And that's nothing for us to be spooky about, to be running around with our chicken with our head cut off, but these are the end times. To be truthful with you, the end days and the end times started when Jesus touched this earth and came through Mary, crucified, buried. Three days he rose again. Right at that time were the end days or the end of time. Amen? Amen. So it would behoove us to know what to do. And the only, 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 only way we're going to know what to do is that we know the word of God. Because what he's written in this book gives us good instruction on how to walk, how to talk, and even how to think right now. Amen? Amen. Let's go to... Um, also, I want to go to Matthew 4 and 4. Let me read that one. Matthew 4 and 4 says this, and I know you know it. I know, I know you know it out there. I know we know it in here. But it says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Did it say only the New Testament? No, it did not. It said every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to get started. I wanted to get started. I just wanted to kind of bust up some things, you know, because I know that we get those questions. Why are you studying the book of Isaiah? And we're in the middle of a pandemic. Well, the book of Isaiah tells us that all of this stuff is coming anyway. We'll get to that part in a little bit. Amen. So it's good to be informed. You can't be informed only reading half of the word. We got to read all of the word. Amen. Amen. And, and let me let me stop right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm enthusiastic and I'm on fire for God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. But I also understand that we have those who are hurting right now. I, I totally understand that. I understand that we have some right now that are in fear right now. I totally understand that. But it is the job of leadership in the congregation to be faithful to the Lord. Amen. The people that we are serving. Hallelujah. We have to be an example unto them. Amen? Yeah. Deacons, you have to be an example to the people that we're leading right now. They can't see you running around. Amen? Preachers, we have to be an example to the people that we're leading right now. We can't be cussing out folks going back and forth with them over stuff that don't make no sense. We have to be speaking the word. It's time to speak the word like never before. It's time to speak the word. What God gave us, the only thing that's going to work in this time. Amen? Amen. So I want to, I wanna, now that we've gotten that out the way, I want to go to chapter 2 in the book of Isaiah. Now, you know, as, as we've started, the Lord sent Isaiah to the southern part of Israel, to Judea and the capital of Jerusalem. To let his people know that they must repent. They need to change their ways. They have turned their back on the Lord. They've actually watched while the northern portion of Israel has went into captivity. But they don't think that it could ever happen to them. It kind of reminds me that probably about a month ago when we were seeing things in China, we were probably saying, ooh, look at them. But now, ooh, look at us. Amen. Amen. But I love the Lord because God always gives us a warning. His prophets come to give us a warning, not just to slap us around and make us look stupid or, or feel silly. His prophets come to give us a warning. So I'm reading some words from his prophet Isaiah, because even though he's given them a stern warning, he's also given them peace. He's also bringing them comfort. In the book of Isaiah, we're going to see some stern warnings, but we're also going to see a tapestry of grace, peace, and mercy yeah. woven all the way through this book. Amen? Amen. Let, me just, let me just go to the, go to the book right now. As we, ended, as, we ended verse, as we ended chapter 1, as we ended chapter 1 and going into verse 2, Chapter 1 ends like this. For you shall be as the terabith whose leaves fade and as a garden that has no water. The strong shall be as tender and the work of it a spark. Both will burn together and no one shall quench them. 
And what he was saying as he, as he ended in chapter 1 is that there's going to be some suffering going on because you haven't turned to me. Your strong men are going to be weak now. Amen. Amen. And your city's going to be left defenseless. But what I love about the book of Isaiah, he'll go from one part and then he'll go to a part of encouragement. And that's what we see when we go to chapter 2. Now, if you're looking for the book of Isaiah to be all in chronological order, you'll go crazy. Because in chapter 2, he's going to jump to the millennial rule, the millennial kingdom. When Jesus reigns for 1,000 years. So he goes back and forth. He, sometimes he goes 100 years ahead, 400 years ahead. But in chapter 2, he's going to go thousands of years ahead. Amen. Which, that's where we are, right? Pretty much on the threshold of the end of days. Amen. If you can read for me chapter 2, and we'll start at verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. The word which Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it will come about that in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills and all the nations will stream to it. And many people will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Mm -hmm. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there. And this is, this is a beautiful portion of scripture right here because Isaiah just got through letting loose on the nation, telling them that the judgment of God is actually coming. But right here in chapter 2, he switches gears for a minute. And, and I love the Lord. He's like that. He doesn't just take us and skull drag us down the street. He'll warn us. He'll let us know. And he'll come in and he'll also continue to comfort us. That's why I love the tapestry of the comfort of God through the book of Isaiah. It's not all harsh, amen, but it's promising and it's to bring us joy. Let's look at this for a minute. He says, the word, of the, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Let's look at that again. Judah and Jerusalem, the southern portion of Israel, and he's speaking to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, amen. And they, they're the temple and the very presence of God is supposed to be dwelling there. But ain't it something that during this time right here, that the Lord has taken his presence out of the temple. Yeah. Has taken his presence out of the temple and the people didn't even know it. And sometimes I wonder in our time, is it that we were just having church? And God had kind of left the building. And he didn't get our attention. So now he closes the building. That's for Sunday, though. Amen. Right. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days. Let's look at this, the latter days. We are in the latter days. Amen. Now, the millennial, the millennial rule, the thousand-year reign, has not started yet. But we are in that time. How do I know that we're in that time? I want to go to Acts chapter 2, verse 16. And, I, and I'll read that because I know I got a lot of scriptures tonight, and I know I didn't give them to you in advance, but let me go ahead and read that. Uh, when the day of Pentecost came and the people came out and they were speaking in other languages or other tongues, and the people were listening and they said, how is it that we hear these old common Galileans speaking in our language? Peter rose up and he said something. And he said it in chapter 2, verse 16. He said, 
I'm going to start with 15. He says, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Listen to what he's saying. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel thousands of years ago, that it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Yeah. Amen. We are in the last days, and we have been in the last days since Christ came. Amen. And we're waiting on his return. The Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words, letting us know that Jesus is coming back. Yeah. He's cracking the sky with the voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise. Those that remain shall be caught up to meet him. Somewhere along the line, that got mundane. Yeah. We stopped getting excited about that. And Paul said, comfort one another so you know how to behave in these last days so that you won't give up hope. So when coronavirus has come up on the scene, might I say the first of many to come, yeah. you won't lose your hope. Amen. Mm, I know this is Bible study. This is Bible study. Right. I understand. Now it should come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Now I know what you're saying. What are you talking about? The mountains of the Lord's house mm -hmm. shall be established. The Lord's house is his holy temple. It is Jerusalem. It is the temple. And even though we don't see it in its prominence right now, there's coming a day when the Lord's house is going to reign and rule over all this land, over all the world, and every hill and everything that ever exalted itself against the word of God and against God will be flattened and leveled. This is in the millennial kingdom, the thousand-year reign. Let's, let's read just a little more. She... It says that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow to it. We don't have all nations flowing into the house of the Lord right now. But that day is coming. That day. See how Isaiah goes and goes thousands of years ahead to give us right now some comfort. Because you may be running around and thinking that God is out of control, but right here it says that in your time, God's going to rule. And he's not going to rule behind some preacher, behind some pastor. He's not going to need no preachers and pastors. He's going to rule directly on this earth. There's coming a time. And I'm getting glad about that. Amen. I'm getting glad about that. It says, and the nations shall flow to it, meaning that just like in a day and time right now when a new movie comes out, let's say X-Men, this and that will be, did you see it? Did you go and see it? Oh, man, it was something. Did you go and see it? There's coming a time on earth when people are going to say, did you hear the Lord? Did you hear what the Lord said? Come, let us go. Let us flow into him and let us hear what this God has to say. This God that created us. Yeah. Amen. This God of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, many people shall come and say, come. I told you in verse 3, it says, many people shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Now, now I know that this is past our time, but I think that we should be in, in times like these, especially when these doors open up again, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah, I think all of God's people, all of God's people, yeah. hallelujah, should have that on a come and let us go into the house of the Lord. I know many of us right now, because we can't come into this place, and I understand that. Yeah. That, that argument is worn out about we are the, yes, we are the church. But I know many of us 
are like, man, I wish I could see my brother and my sister again. Amen. Because it's more than just praying by yourself. It's more than just reading by yourself. This is a supernatural connection, a supernatural body. And I, for one, will be glad when God lifts what's going on right now so that we can come together and see each other once again. I miss my brothers and I miss my sisters, but I want God to have his perfect work, so I'm going to stay still. Amen? Hallelujah. And hopefully when we come back together, we'll be some changed folk. Am I right about it? Amen. And we appreciate each other. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, it says, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. He will teach us his ways. We as a people have to learn some things. And we shall walk in his paths. I love that you said that, Brother Carlos. We shall walk in in his past. We've walked in our own path too much. We've treaded our own way too much. We thought our way was the right way. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but that way leads unto destruction. Amen. I'm tired of going my way. I'm tired of walking my way. Who wants to walk in the path of the Lord? Mm. Oh my God. This is the word of God. This is what the word of God does. It it wakes us up. It opens up our eyes as we study the word of God. We find out that he is not this cosmic killjoy with a bat in his hand waiting to crack us upside the head. Even though he warns Israel and he warns his church, he still loves us. And he lets us know that I've not let you go. I might have to stop hearing you for a minute until you get it, but I haven't let you go. Amen. This is the God that we're talking about. Hallelujah. It says, verse 4, verse 4, verse 4. Now, this is the part right here. It says, or did I pass? Did I, pass? Did I, did I go too far? Okay. For out of Zion, before we get to verse 4, I'm sorry. In verse 3, for out of Zion shall go forth the law, the instructions of life, the word of God. There's coming a day. It's coming today. Now, right now, he has the church. And the word of God is supposed to be coming from the church to the world. But there's coming a day where he's going to overstep everybody and he's going to give it out his own mouth. Am I right about it? But my thing is, I want to be faithful in bringing the word of the Lord out of my mouth. Not just in this microphone, but when I'm out of here. Can I get personal? When I'm out of here, when I'm in the grocery store, when I'm on Facebook, are we speaking the word of God? Or are we speaking our opinion? People are not trusting the church right now because we're speaking everything but the word of God. We are God's representation on this earth. And the word and the law and the instruction of God should be coming out of the church right now. We don't have time for anything else. We don't have time to criticize one another. We have to speak the word. And if you're on Ustream right now, can you say it with me? Speak the word. Amen. Speak the word. Somebody asked me, did you hear about what happened with such and such? And I'm like, I can't speak on that. I'm speaking the word. I'm speaking the word. I, don't, I, I, I can't speak for no other pastor in no other state and no other city. I can't speak about what this church is doing, what this church ain't doing. I'm speaking the word. And I'm praying for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Mm -mm. But this is the Old Testament, though. See what we're digging out of the Old Testament. See what we're digging out the book of Isaiah. How the book of Isaiah is so relevant for right now. It says, it says, he shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. There's coming a day when God is going to step down in his holy mountain, in his holy temple, and he's going to 
rule and he's going to judge. He's going to be the judge. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he's going to set the nations right. Can I, can I do something? I want to take a peek at this. I want to take a peek at this. I want to go to the millennial rule. I'm going to Revelations chapter 20. Yes, I said Revelations. I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not going to stay in there. That's a little deep. We got to start at the beginning, but I'm using it as a reference. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, Revelations chapter 20 and verse 1 says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the keys to the bottomless pit, a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan. And he bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. I'm going to keep on going. Verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God. Let me tell you how far we go when we trust God. Who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark in their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Look at this. For a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. Amen. So Christ is reigning for these thousand years. The enemy is subdued and locked away. The enemy that we give so much power to, the devil that we give so much recognition to, there's coming a day when the Lord is going to bind him up. Shut them up for a thousand years. But can I tell you a secret? After those thousand years, he's going to come out of that pit and he's going to deceive man again. Yes, he is. And we're going to see that it wasn't all about the devil, but it was about the sin in us. Amen? Amen. Now, I don't want to get lost in there. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to, uh, to Isaiah. Chapter 2, it says, he shall judge between the nations. It says he's going to judge between the nations. And in Revelation, it says he's going to rule with a rod of iron. That means that, that, that there won't be any, um, how can I put this? I, I want to go to court to petition against Jesus. There's coming a day where that's not happening. He's going to rule in such a way, whatever he says, that's what goes. And I, I don't know about you, but this gives me great, this gives me great hope and great comfort. And can I tell you why? Because the way that these nations are ruling and governing us, the laws that they are enacting, they break my heart. And I know that sometimes they break your heart. These immoral laws that they keep breaking and they want us to abide by, that they keep voting on. But there's coming a day when the Lord say, enough with that nonsense. My word stands over everything. Amen. 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 I'm talking to the church right now. I ain't trying to convince nobody outside the church about this right here. But I'm talking to the church, the true blood-bought believers of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's keep going. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many of people. Many of people. Many of people are going to be rebuked, checked harshly and thoroughly. Yeah. But you know something? God, sometimes he rebukes us. Not to send us to hell, but to let us know that we're out of order. Because sometimes we need to know that we're out of order. And God will send his word to rebuke us. I believe that the church is in the middle of a rebuking right now. And God is saying, change your ways. Bow down before me. Let go of your toys and your idols and come before my presence. Amen. 
It says, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Can you imagine a time when there are no guns? During this reign of Jesus for this thousand years, there will be no guns. There will be no weapons. Men will finally beat their, their swords or their guns into pruning hooks. What do pruning hooks do? They, they take care of plants and trees growing fruits and vegetables so that people can eat because it's so important for people to eat instead of getting shot. Yeah. Am I right about it? Mm-hmm. Now, I understand that nations can't do that right now because the world is full of sin and we need some defense. But there's coming a day when Jesus will be our defense visually. Amen. And their spears in the pruning hooks. It says, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. We won't practice. You know we practice war. Amen. Our, 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 our army, our military, and I thank God for our military. I thank God for them practicing war because we need a defense. But there's going to come a time when there's going to be no need to practice any war. And I know that you're saying, just like I'm saying, I got to see that. I got to see that to believe it. Amen. But these are the things that the Bible is telling us. These are the things that Isaiah is telling us so that while we're all the way up here in the future, and he wrote this thousands of years ago, we can be like, well, well God already addressed some of this nonsense. Yeah. There's an expiration date on this buffoonery and this clowning in our society. Amen? Amen. So let's look at this last statement right here in verse 5. Verse 5 is little, but let's look at it. It says, O house of Jacob. I love the way he used Jacob. He didn't say, O house of Israel. He said, O house of Jacob. He referred to them by Jacob because Jacob is trickster, sinister, trying to supplant, get his own way, maneuver. He said, but O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of of the Lord. Come and let us walk. And he, he stops for a minute. He goes in, in verse 2. What he's saying is, this is what God has planned for us. It's not to utterly destroy you. He's coming back. He's going to reign. So then he says, oh house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. What is the light of the Lord? The word of God. Now that you know that this is not your end, now that you know that God has plans for you, as he said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he has plans for you. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Yeah. Mm. Man, come, let us walk. Not you, not you get it together, but let us get it together. I may be facilitating a Bible study, but let me tell you something. This word is doing the same thing to me oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that it's doing to you. Yeah. Yeah. So I say to the church right now, in the middle of Bible study, oh church, the ecclesia, the called out ones of God, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Oh my God, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. We can because we're his children. I got, a, I got a scripture. I got a scripture in 1 John. I got a scripture in 1 John. Let me read this scripture in 1 John. It delights me right now. It says, in 1 John chapter 1 and 5, this is John the apostle uh, uh, speaking to those who are saved. He says, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you. This is 1 John, 1 John, chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. That even affects our fellowship with one another when we walk in the light of God. Yeah. 
Amen. I know that I'm walking in the light of God because I'm getting along with my brothers and my sister. I can't be at odds with my brother and my sister and claim that I'm walking in the light of God. Mm. I know this is Bible study. It says we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I wanted to just stop right there. God is calling us to walk in his light. We got a little song, walk in the light. Amen. I wish I knew the words I'd sing it. But still, but we're called to walk in the light. Now, he twists again, and it's like a roller coaster ride. As he goes to verse 6, he's going to change his pattern of discussion. He's going to change his attitude. He's going to directly talk to God in verse 6. This is, this is Isaiah talking to God in verse 6. He's saying, for you have forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, because they are filled with eastern ways. You see what God is doing. At the same time, he's, 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 how can I put this? He's blessing the people with what's to come. He's comforting them, but he's not letting up on what they're doing. He's not, let, he's not okay in their sin. He's not saying, it's okay, everything will be all right. That's a lie. He said, I have something for you. I have blessings for you. And in, and in between, you know how, how sometimes our parents used to spank us or something? Spank. Uh, I don't know why I used that word, but whoop. And they talked to us in between the spank or the whooping. Well, God will do that. He'll give you a breather so that he can give you some good instruction so that you'll know how to act next time. All right. So he says, so Isaiah says to the Lord, for you have forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, because they have filled, they are filled with eastern ways. They are soothsayers like the Philistines. Let's stop right there right now. He says they are filled with eastern ways. He said they are filled with false Religion. They are filled with false religion. They're doing some practices that God has not shown them or taught them. It reminds me of right now in the body of Christ. We're starting to take a little of this and a little of that, a little of self-help, a little of Hindu, a little of this, a little of that, and we're trying to bring it in and make it work with God. God don't need no help. And what he's telling these people is, you brought in Eastern religion to my worship. I've already shown you how to worship me. I gave you the dimensions for the temple. I told you what to sacrifice. I told you how to dress the priests and how to adorn them with their clothing. I told you what to sacrifice. I told you how to come to sacrifice. But what they start doing is adding extra stuff. And if I wanted to get technical, I could get technical. Because we're bringing transcendental and dental meditation into the body. Which basically is saying that you're a God and what you have in you will heal you. You better stop playing. We better stop playing. God, God didn't say that. The word of God doesn't say that. See, these Eastern religions that he's talking about put man on the pedestal and God to the side. But true Christianity puts God on the pedestal and man is subservient. Am I right about it? Okay, all right, all right. I know you're going to argue with me, but that's okay, because this is the word. It says, they are soothsayers like the Philistines. I always want to know what's getting ready to happen. Everybody got a word. All right. Everybody know what's getting ready to happen. They're consulting, consulting spirits, yeah. idols, and demons yeah. like the Philistines. When I gave you prophets... But you didn't want to hear what they had to say. And, and that's what people do. That's what we do when we don't want to hear what God has to say. We set up for ourselves people 
give them a title, and we listen to them. Hmm. So it says, they are soothsayers like the Philistines, wanting to predict the future. We, we ain't got to be trying to predict the future. The Bible tells us the future. And that has to be enough. That must be enough. Amen. I don't need for you to tell me about what car I'm going to drive next week. That's not important. But I know that Jesus is coming back and he's going to crack open the sky. And he's coming for his church. I know that's going to happen. And since I know that's going to happen, I just must, must be about my father's business. And that needs to be all right for us. It needs to be all right for us that we need to be about our father's business. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. It says, and they are pleased with the children of foreigners. Wow. They are pleased with the children of foreigners. God told Israel not to marry outside of their nation. He says, the nations that I'm sending you in the midst of, they worship idols. They worship other gods. And if you allow your sons to marry their daughters, they will turn their hearts to their gods. Well, it happened. It happened. Well, how does that relate to us? We can't be so entwined with folks who don't know God. And I'm not just talking about marriage, but I'm even talking about real friendship to where they influence us to do what they do in the worshiping of self, in the worshiping of materialism, in the worshiping of their God. Now is the time for the church to be bind together. I'm not saying that we don't witness to people. Yes, we witness to people. Yes, we love people. But we can't be bound with them when they don't know God. The mm. Bible tells us not to be unevenly yoked. That's for real. Can't be unevenly yoked. We can't, we can't partner with everything the government does. We can't give our stamp of approval because the government said it's okay now. Oh, it's okay now. Well, let me see in the Bible if it's saying it's okay now. And to be honest with you, a large part of the body of Christ have intertwined with man, with society, with that which is secular. It's the truth. And then we want to come back and beat our people over the head because they don't want to accept certain things. Well, the Bible that you've been preaching out of tells us not to accept it. And anytime we go outside of the Bible to tell our people to accept something that God has not ordained, we're out of order. And I don't care how much hell come down after that. We're out of order. I know this is Bible study. But could this be why our doors are closed? Could this be why our doors are closed? Because... We are pleased with the children of foreigners. We're allowing the children of the enemy to infiltrate our congregations in all levels and wonder why we have no power to do nothing or say nothing. Because we linked up with foreigners and I'm not talking about people who are coming from other countries, so don't even go there. But I'm talking about people who are against your God. And you call them experts. Really? Okay. Verse 7 says, Their land is also full of silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. What he said about these people in the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord said, I don't want you to depend on your silver, silver and gold and your own personal treasures. I don't want you to depend on your horses. I don't want you to depend on your chariots because I want you to know that I'm in control and I'm taking care of you. 
That's why every seven years he said, don't go and plant anything. Let the land rest. Trust me. I got you. But they had stopped depending on him and started depending on what they could see. And all I have to do is look at Michael. Because this, is, this happens to Michael. I stopped depending on God and I start depending on what I see. It says, the land is also full of silver and gold. Everybody got a portfolio. I'm not speaking down on portfolio. We must plan. It's good to plan. We have to plan. I understand that. But when you put your hopes and dreams and all your heart in your portfolio, your portfolio will fail you. And we're seeing that now. We're on the cusp of something of greater destruction than any of us really could ever think or conceive. This ain't, this ain't no joke. This ain't no, no fire drill. Go to the nearest exits. This ain't no fire drill. So it says, this is how the land has come. This is why you have forsaken your people, Lord, because they're trusting in their silver and their gold. And there is no end to their treasures. And what he is saying is what they're storing up. It's like the, it's like the man that said, I've done well for myself. I have a bumper crop this year. I will go and I will build a barn and I will put more in that barn. And then it said, fool, tonight your soul is required. Yes. Yes, this is Bible study. Yes, it is. Th th their land is also full of horses. Now, let's go a thousand years, thousands of years up. Your land is full of cars. Amen. Everybody's mobile. Everybody has a, a, a convenience. There's nothing wrong with cars. But what he's saying is you're putting your hope and your faith in things that die. That's all he's saying. These are good things. There's nothing wrong with silver and gold. There's nothing wrong with treasure. There's nothing wrong with having a portfolio. There's nothing wrong with having a nice car. But he says, Israel, you've gotten to the point to where you think these things make you. And since you're clinging on to them more than you're clinging on to me, I'm not hearing your prayers anymore. Turning my back on you. Oh, and I'm going to shut your church down. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Where are we at? Where are we at? There is no end to their chariots. Again, traveling in luxury, putting our faith in luxury, putting our faith in because we're comfortable today. We think we'll always be comfortable. We'll always have these things. Go get your toilet paper now. Go get your Lysol spray now. Oh, it's not there. That's just, that's just a small thing. And I'm not an alarmist, but what happens when the food's not there? What happens when the food's not there? What happens when the house is not there? What happens when the car is not there? God is showing us with these little bitty things, these little things, so that we may turn around to him now. Because it gets greater and greater and greater and greater. But if we hear him now, if we turn around now, and I know that ain't popular, and I know some people are going to be talking about you because they talk about me, and that's okay. I know it ain't popular, but if we turn around now, we can avoid some things. And that's what Isaiah was saying. Come, let us walk in the light. Let us walk in the paths of God. Yeah. Come on, let us do that. Mm. I feel a break right now. I feel a stopping point right now. Yeah, I know I put down a lot tonight. But this is the book of Isaiah. And I want to say that the book of Isaiah is very relevant to the times that we are in right now. But I don't want to leave you without letting you know that God hears 
everything concerning your heart. I know this is a hard time for the congregation and the church right now, and I don't make light of that. It is. But it's a time for us to draw close to God. It's a time for us to draw close to God. I'm going to end in the book of Psalms, and I'm going to read Psalms 27. Because I want to let you know that this God that we serve, he loves the socks off of us. You hear me? He loves us. We are his children. Hallelujah. I want to go to Psalms 27. And this is what the psalmist said, David. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. <laughs> whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this, I will be confident. One thing. Is it your one thing? Is it my one thing? One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, and yes, we're in trouble right now, but in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And, and now my head shall be lifted up above all my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Yeah. Woo Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. I need an answer from you, Lord. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Somebody knows that. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in the smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen up against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart. Unless I have believed, I would have lost heart, he said, unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then he goes on to say, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Trinity, be of good courage. Body of Christ, be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait I say, on the Lord. And the few right here, but the many looking on. Can we say amen? Amen. amen? amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have heard this word and, and you know that there's a void in your life and you know that you're not saved and you need to be saved. You've not received salvation from the Lord. Jesus died so that our sins could be covered and forgiven. But that won't apply to you unless you do what he said. Repent and believe. I don't care where you are in life. If this has pricked your heart in such a way, don't ignore this. Repent and believe. Believe what? That Jesus is the son of the living God. That he died and took the punishment that you were supposed to receive. And that he's gone back to be with the Lord and he's coming back to claim those who belong to him. Do you want to belong to him? Yes, I'm asking you if you want to be his property. Do you have a problem being somebody else's property? 
Jesus died so that you could become his property. And let me tell you something. He treats his property very well. So now is the time to turn from your way and turn to Yahweh, Yahshua, the son of the living God. It can happen right now. It can happen right now. Make the decision. Don't let time pass you by. Don't let nobody whisper in your ear. Get on the floor right now, right where you are. Ask the Lord to save your soul. Let them know that you're a sinner and you know you're a sinner. Save my soul, Lord. I ain't got nothing to offer but this sin. But I'm turning from it and I'm turning to you because I want you to own me. I want you to lead me and I want you to guide me. Hallelujah. Make a decision. Make a decision. Surrender unto God. And as soon as you do, tell everybody you know. Hallelujah. Family, it has been our pleasure to come before you in Bible study tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the few that we have for being here. I want to let you know, family, also that we are, we, we are doing this as the government mandated. It is only seven people in here. Is it seven or eight? Seven. Seven people in this building that seats 800. We're being obedient. Amen? Hallelujah. God bless you. God's peace be upon you. May he keep you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Daily I will worship thee, Lamb of God who died for me, who's extended endless mercies. Daily I will worship thee, daily I will. Worship thee. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you, brothers. Thank you, man. Thank you.